Um, oh, I get my, I get this recorded. That's exciting. Uh, so, you know, I, I think I've met a couple of you before in these Zoom meetings. Some of you, I have not. Some of you are like, yes, yes, we know you. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, <clears throat> I, uh, so I've been with Cutco for a very long time. Um, probably as long as Kathy, if not longer. I started in 2002 as a rep. Um, some of you were like, not like just born that year, not even, which makes me feel really old. Uh, anyway, I sold about 100 grand as a rep. I was a district manager for 10 years. Um, so basically in that 10 years time span, um, I worked with Drew Frank, some of you may know him, um, and helped build him, helped helped him build the Rocky Mountain Division. And in that time, I was able to hit the Cutco Hall of Fame. Um, so as a district manager, you need to produce uh, over 10 million. I produced $13 million in Cutco sales. And so my face is in the Cutco Hall of Fame as a district manager. But uh, in 2015, I met the man of my dreams and he was living in St. Croix at the time. Um, if you don't know where that's at, it's uh, in the Virgin Islands. And I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he said, do you want me to move to Albuquerque or do you want me, or do you want to come live in the Virgin Islands? And I said, hmm, let me think about that. And so uh, I shut down my office, which back then it was either a physical office or nothing. So I shut down my office, moved to the Virgin Islands and got recruited essentially to do two different coaching um, aspects within Cutco. Uh, one, I coach managers with their business and how to become more efficient. And then now I also work for Rising Stock, which I'm going to be talking to you guys about today. Um, and so I was a Rising Stock client for my entire 10 years as a DM. And now I get to give back all of the financial pitfalls I made and also all the great decisions I made financially. I can teach others uh, basically what you absolutely should do and what you should not do while running an office. So I am absolutely uh, excited to be with y'all today uh, to be able to share a message with you. Now, just by show of hands, just so I know what I'm working with here, how many of you are training to um, be a branch manager? Okay, so we got, okay, good. Wow, it's like a, a nice little rainbow. All right, great. And how many of you are training to be a district manager? All right, beautiful. Okay, great. And then there's probably a few of you who's who here's being a sales manager or system manager. And a couple, a couple. Okay, beautiful. Well, no matter what your role is this summer, uh, this is more geared toward um, branches and district managers who are going to be going out. But if you're an assistant manager that's going to be going out, you're still going to get a couple of great nuggets from this message. So I hope that you're ready. Um, and for those of you who have heard this message before, some of it will be some repeat material, but uh, it's always great to hear again, especially to just learn and, and make sure that you're, you're covering things well. So can you all see the rising stock pitfalls and pots of gold um, screen? Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Jocelyn. Uh, you gave me the thumbs up like right away. You're on top of that. Okay, wonderful. Well, the basic, basically my goal today is I'm gonna be talking about some financial best practices. We're going to talk about the ideal cash flow setup. We'll cover systems that save you profit. And then I'll be reviewing the rising stock service. And then if we have some time, um, I can uh, go around and get your key takeaway and or uh, answer any questions that you might have. All right, so let's talk about some financial best practices. Now, again, this is not just for people who are running their offices. This is also for um, any human uh, that had deals with money, which is all of us, right? So, uh, so I think that you'll be able to get a lot from this no matter um, who you are. So here's a couple of do's and don'ts. So especially if you're running an office, keeping a record of all business receipts and payroll. So this is important as a rep right now. This is an important as a, uh, as a business owner. There's this myth that has been going around that as long as you have your bank statements, you're fine. But the reality is, um, if you get audited by the IRS, which means they want to see proof, like when you say, oh, yeah, I have all these write-offs, uh, they just want to see the specifics of that. So what they're going to want, want is the itemized receipt. So like if you go to Walmart, and you spend $50 and you say, yeah, that was all business stuff. I have it on my you know, checking statement. 
Well, that doesn't have it itemized of what you spent it on. So that's why you need the receipts. So I'm going to give you two different ways uh, to be able to keep this uh, that is relatively easy. And so the first one is, yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so the first way to keep record of these receipts is use an uh, app that's free, my favorite le four letter F word, uh, and that is called Expensify. Uh, it's called Expensify. So if you download that, you can just take a quick picture of the receipt. And I apologize ahead of time, I have a three-year-old daughter who is probably gonna come say hi to y'all, um, but she's pretty adorable. Um, so anyway, but Expensify, you take a quick picture of the receipt and you can categorize it. The second way that you can be able to keep your receipts is, uh, or you can do both if you really like to be on top of things. Uh, I would go to the dollar store and get big Ziploc bags and then just use a sh and get some Sharpies and label each Ziploc bag as the month and just keep it in your car or wherever you typically have receipts. And so like, for example, it would be, you know, March of 2022. And every time you get a receipt that could be business deductible, you throw it in there, you Ziploc it when you're done with that month and then you start a new Ziploc bag. Of course, you can do like a full year. I just found the month, um, the monthly breakup makes it a little bit easier. So for if you for representatives, if you're still out selling anything that you're spending while you're on the job, right? You want to make sure you're keeping those receipts. Anything you want to write off. Now, I know that we probably have 50-50 or some of you or all of you are opening up a physical office. If you are, um, please don't buy any expensive furniture. And you don't need to look the part yet. Um, you don't need to have anything really fancy. Uh, again, try to get anything and everything for free. Okay, so I look at a lot of profit and loss statements of district managers across the nation. And one of the biggest ways that district managers will flush their money down the toilet is through the two biggest scams that I think are alive, which is Uber Eats and DoorDash. And the reason I think they're scams is because if you look, like if you buy like a $15 meal, there's usually like $15 worth of fees. Uh, some of you are nodding your head. Uh, and so you just paid double for whatever you were doing. So prep your meals, put it in the schedule. One of the things that if you don't already have something in your schedule, it's called a power hour. I highly recommend it. It's an hour where you plan out your entire week. You could do some pl planning for recruiting, planning for when you're gonna go grocery shopping, because if you don't plan it in the schedule, it's not gonna happen. Um, so plan where you go grocery shopping, what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna prep, and uh, just make sure that it's, uh, that it's there. So uh, otherwise, you're going to be spent wasting a lot of money. Secondly, we all know fast food isn't the greatest for energy, right? Um, it's not the, the greatest for energy, so it's going to bring you down as well. So <laughs> yes, and Daniel, you know, one of the things you can do is uh, Google is a beautiful thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, just uh, just Google a bunch of stuff. Uh, I created a spreadsheet with all my favorite recipes, and then uh, me and my husband just uh, one night. I'm like, "Which what recipes do you want?" Uh, I know I'm a uh, I'm a little bit of a nerd uh, for creating a spreadsheet, but it just makes it easy for me. All right, so the next one is to barter with Cutco. Um, barter with Cutco. So if you are getting an office, um, use once you're a manager, once you're officially promoted you get an extreme discount on Cutco. So if you are trying to get anything, whether it's furniture, an office, uh, or if you need to get anything that, I know that they're coming out with some new programs where you can get Cutco, like a, some pieces of Cutco at a ridiculously low price. So use that to your advantage um, and make sure to use Cutco to see if you could get deals wherever you can with whatever you need. So even if it's like a mechanic or, um, you know, like a cleaning person or whatever you're get, like whatever service you're getting, see if you can use your sales skills uh, to use Cutco to pay for it instead of you actually paying out of pocket. 
learning how to recruit now is one of the most important things because that is what fuels your business. So um, I know most of you probably have heard all of these things like social media, jumpstart, SMRAs, campuses, PR, campus PRs. But if you have any questions about any of these areas, now is the time to get them answered because essentially your first six weeks open, whether that's part of April into May, or if you start early May through June, your first six weeks open, like how much momentum you can build in those six weeks will really set the pace for the rest of your summer. Um, so, and it's not, I mean, mailers are great, but it's all about these first six weeks and how many can you get launched because that fuels the PR game, which I know you already all know this, but um, it's not just going to happen. And so make sure you're, you feel really superb about those areas. But also one of the things I would say do start doing and not necessarily right now, because you probably are saving every single cent to open up your office, but I would start investing as soon as the middle or the end of the summer. So it's only a couple, couple of months away, but I would start investing now because I know we got a lot of younger people on the call here. And I'll tell you that um, if you start investing now, it's gonna be well worth your while. So just for fun, I have a little graph in here. So uh, how many 20 year olds we got just by show, 20 or, or younger? 20 or younger show of hands. Okay, we got a good handful, beautiful. So, so if you were 20 or younger, and let's say you wanna retire at 65, if you max out your Roth IRA every single year, um, which I'm gonna explain here in a moment, you're gonna have $2.3 million in retirement. Now, for those of you who are older than 20, as long as you start at 25 and you invest for up until you're 65, the same amount of, as to the same point, you would have $1.5 million for retirement. So what's a Roth? How many of you are familiar with what a Roth is just by show of hands? Hey, we got a handful of people, <laughs> yeah, the individuals who have been on my call before. All right, beautiful. Um, okay, so what a Roth IRA is, it is one of the best investments that you can make as a young person. And a couple of reasons why is that first, um, it's essentially investing into like the stock market, but it's in this vehicle or in this bubble called a Roth. And the advantage of the Roth is that, well, the biggest advantage is that when you put money in, so let's say you put $6,000 a year in, which is the max you can put in, you can only put up to $6,000. There's a reason for that. It will grow and grow and grow and grow and build interest. The greatest wonder of the world, the eighth wonder of the world that Albert Einstein says is compound interest. So this $6,000 a year will grow and grow and grow and grow up to this 2.3 or $1.5 million. When you take it out, you do not have to pay a cent of taxes on any of that growth. Now, how many of you absolutely hate paying the IRS some taxes, right? We don't want it. We don't want to pay the IRS any taxes, right? So what's awesome about the Roth is you pay taxes on the $6,000 or how much ever you put going in, but you don't pay any of it coming out. And so this is a beautiful thing to set yourself up. I know retirement sounds so far away for a lot of you, especially if you're 20, but this is the best way that you can build wealth in the background and let your money truly work for you. Um, you might hear people talk about like having your money work for you, the Roth IRA is the way to go. So you're like, okay, that sounds great. So, uh, so a couple of things you should know. One is there's no minimum. Like you could put $100 in there this year and that's if that's all you could do, then that's great. That'd be better than nothing because it's gonna compound uh, interest. Secondly, um, the reason why you can only put $6,000 in there is because the government wants to tax you on as much money as they can. So they only wanna allow you to put $6,000 in there. So, that's, so if you can max it out, that's great. But third, I would not, I would not start investing into this until your business is steady um, and, and rocking. This is usually around July. Um, so May and June are the growing months. Uh, usually July is where you have the biggest profitability. There's a couple of ways that you can set this up. One is if you're over, uh, oh, I thought I had it. Okay, well, if you're over 20,000 in sales and you're a branch, 
you can actually you can actually email Stephanie Stevens um, and I'll go ahead and type it in right now so that way you can just have it for future reference. But you can email Stephanie Stevens in Olean. Um, she's with the company and she we actually have a partnership with this place called um, American Funds and you can set up a Roth IRA through the company and they can take out a percentage of every single paycheck. So let's say you're killing it and you're definitely making a lot more money than uh, you, you, you need. Um, in July, I would email Stephanie Stevens uh, at cutco.com um, and tell her I want to I want to get a I Roth IRA set up. Another way that you can do it is, <laughs> yes, Daniel, you should ask for that. Uh, Another way that you can go about it is you can ask your parents about it. They have a financial advisor or there's this really cool app called Acorns. And that's like a really like easy way to get started at least. Um, and then you can always transfer it to a different Roth IRA later. So, um, but start investing ASAP. Okay, so don't, don't feed your team too much. One of the biggest mistakes that district managers and branch managers make is they're like, taking their team out or they're ordering for their team constantly. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, you might get wined and dined by Kathy, but she's a division manager. <laughs> okay. So um, as a brand new rep, like you don't want to feed your team too much. So if you do want to get together and meet for like, you know, at Applebee's or coffee, don't feel like you have to pay for them. You know, it's like, Hey, this is an open invite. Like if you want to come, you can, uh, I mean, you can do it as a contest, but don't feel like you need to pay for your team. Okay, now, how many of you know who McCall Simons is? Have any of you heard that name before? Okay, so a couple of people, all right, great. So he's a great guy, really nice. And he was running for a uh, district office, excuse me. And he had this rep who was just in a sticky situation. She needed to buy a new car. And she's like, you know, I don't, nobody in my family can help me out. Would you please co-sign for me on this car? And long story short, ended up, ended up, ended up being like a seven year long nightmare uh, that he was in because when you co-sign, you're partly responsible. She kind of, even though she was a, you know, a really nice person, she stopped making her payments, which affected his credit. And he allowed me to share this with you all. So the thing is, is that a lot of people may ask you like, hey, can you co-sign this for me? Because you are like the maybe best person they know in their life or most inspiring, but it can put you in a lot of financial, a lot of financial issues on you and also hurt your credit, which uh, you don't want to do. So um, just make sure like if somebody asks you for this, that you have like a, you've thought about it ahead of time um, and the answer is always uh, no. So, but do invest in the right area of your business, which is always recruiting. Please get really good at promoting the numerous contests that Vector supports, not your own contest. So one of the things I'd highly recommend if you don't already have it is on either a documents or on a spreadsheet, writing out all the different contests that the company has. So PR contests, brand day contests, um, you know, all American president's club, because when you're on PDI and you got a million things going, it can be really hard to remember every, all the contests. What I found is because people don't remember all the contests the company already has, then they just make up their own and end up spending more money, which is like flushing money down the toilet. So just make sure that you uh, have like a list of all vector contests so you can have those. And if you're gonna have additional contests, be smart about it. So here's my two rules of thumb for your additional contests. One, never, ever, 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 ever create a contest in the middle of a meeting. When your emotions are high, your intelligence is really low. Okay, uh, so when your emotions are high, your intelligence is really low. So if you're in the middle of a meeting or on Zoom and you're feeling like super fired up and you're like, that's probably the worst time to create a contest because you'll like give away a lot of stuff and then you'll be like, oh, that probably wasn't the best contest. So first one, don't ever make a contest in the middle of a meeting. If you in the middle of a meeting think, 
oh, it'd probably be great to get a contest. Be like, hey, call me tomorrow morning on PDI or whenever your PDI schedule is. I have a special contest to announce to you, but you have to call me um, at this time. Secondly is run it by your district manager or DVM before you get it. So, hey, so-and-so, I was thinking about running this contest. What do you think about that? And they might say, that's, that's a terrible contest. Or they might say, that's really, really great. So this will just help you out. Okay, don't view your whole paycheck as spendable. Pay yourself like an employee. This is very important for at least your two first months of branch and district because what should be happening is you're getting money, but it should be reinvested back into the business uh, with SMRAs or um, uh, receptionists or whatever you need to do to get more recruits in the door. So if you haven't yet, I'd highly recommend sitting down and making a budget. Uh, Google Sheets is great. Uh, I would just list out all of your expenses, even if you don't feel like you have a ton of expenses, just do your best to try to list them out, right? And then, um, by the way, if you want a pro tip, list out all your expenses, have another column ahead of it that it has the due date and put it in chronological order so you can see uh, what days all your bills are due, and then what the expenses. Now you of course have like your set expenses like your cell phone, but then you have variable expenses like groceries or dining out. So I would probably make separate, so I have an example of this and I could probably post it for y'all if you'd like it after I get done um, with the PowerPoint. But I have an example of where it has a fixed expenses, due date, bill, and how much it is. But then there's variable expenses, which is like dining out, groceries, and it has what the what it is, and then the goal and actual. So um, if you haven't yet, I would create a personal budget so you can see how much you need bare bones like to live, right? This is not like entertainment or um, going out to eat. What's the bare minimum you need? And then what would be like the ideal that you would like? Um, what would be the goal? And then, um, and then you can also think about other things you'd like to save for. But just having this thought out ahead of time um, will help you a ton because you know, oh, I need $1,000 a month for my personal expenses. So if you get $3,000 from Vector for the month for, you know, when you're first starting up your office, you take 1,000 of it and you leave $2,000 available for your business, um, at least until the end of the summer. So, uh, another thing I'd highly recommend. So these two tips have saved a lot of people who I've coached some heartache and also opened their eyes a lot. And the first one is scheduling something in your schedule called a PC with money every single week. So just like you have a PC with your manager every single week and every time you get done with it, you feel refreshed or like you learn something, do a PC with your money every single week and have it as a reoccurring call or recurring time where you sit down and you look at your money. So some of you might be thinking, all right, well, what do I do? Well, the first PC with money, you can create this budget, right? Um, but the second PC with money and the following PCs with money, what I typically recommend is one, looking at your budget and then looking at your actual expenses, what you actually spent, whether that's on mint.com, if you don't use that, it's a personal, free personal um, budget tracker, or you just go on your bank account and see, like you plug it in, however you wanna do it. But secondly, you look at your paycheck and you, one of the reasons I like to have all my bills in chronological order is Friday, you have your commissions run. You can see you made X amount of money all right, the next two weeks, how many, how much of my bills are due? Okay, so I have $100 left over, or I have $500 left over, or I don't have any money left over, so I need to get on it this next week. And you can make a better plan for the future week to make sure that you are um, selling a lot and uh, really on it. But what a couple of those things do is if you have extra money in your bank account, if you're the type of person that if it just sits in your account, and you're just looking at it, you're gonna spend it on something silly, then you maybe should move it to a, a savings account. So find out what your personal budget is and 
only spend it, spend money on that. So technically as a district manager, as a branch manager, I wouldn't recommend this, but as a district manager, essentially how it would look is if you set up a business account. Um, by the way, you don't want to go in the bank and say, I want to set up a business account. You say, I want to set up a second personal account because they'll charge you for a business account. You have all of your commission statements go into this second business account. So it could be the one that you have open right now. You pay off a business credit card. You don't need that, but if you do have a business credit card, you pay that off first. And then you basically transfer money to your personal account where all your personal bills come out of. Um, your, it's like paying yourself a salary of your own company. And then through your personal account, you pay your personal credit card. So this is what ideally it would look like. Okay, so the next thing, the next do is treat uncommon expenses like a bill. So there are multiple things that throw people off, um, like clothing or tires or um, Christmas gifts or holiday gifts. There are a lot of a lot of things that every year people are like, oh, I, you know, I got to get this money together for this. The thing is, is that when I talk to people, they're like, I don't buy very many gifts or I don't buy very many clothes or I don't buy tires all the time. Those are all true. You don't buy those all the time. So, but you want to plan for it like a bill. So for example, uh, I was talking to a guy the other day who was like, I don't buy shoes very often. I was like, well, uh, I don't buy clothes very often is what he said. And I said, it's probably true, but over the course of a year, chances are you're going to want to buy some new shoes, maybe a new suit or a shirt. So if you had to guess, you know, how much over the course of the year do you think you would spend on that? And so he thought about it and he's like, oh, probably like, $500. So I just took $500 divided by 12. That's 40 bucks a month. So I suggested that he started saving $40 a month in a clothing and shoes and accessories bucket. So that way he can have it for when he needs it. So I would recommend doing this for tires or car maintenance, clothing, shoes, and accessories, um, gifts, because gifts will sneak up on you if you're not careful, right? Um, so all those different types of things. And one of the ways that you can um do this well is use a app so one of my favorite apps is capital uh, you can create as many different savings accounts as you want and you can set it up so a percentage or a particular amount comes out every single week or month um, chime acorns digit they all do the same thing so i'd highly recommend doing that right this second I might not recommend that just because you're saving all your money to run your office, but once things get going and you feel um, a little bit better because you have you know reps on your team and you got CPO rolling, uh, then I'd recommend that. Okay, I would highly recommend investing in your financial literacy as well. So let's say that PC with money, you get done really quickly, what should you do? Well, I would recommend reading for the other 15 minutes. It's crazy how much you can get through if you just spent 15 minutes reading uh, once a day or once a week. But uh, I'll teach you to be rich, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Money Honey by Rachel Richards, uh, Tax-Free Wealth, Total Money Makeover. Okay, let me give you another tip. Um, if you pay for books, stop. If you pay for Audible, stop. Uh, there's two apps that are amazing. And one is called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. The other one is called Hoopla. You can do one or the other. They're the same thing. Uh, all you need is a library card. And if you don't have one, it takes like two seconds to get, like you just have to show two different um, forms of identification at the library and they'll give you a library card. You hook it up to that and you can find all of these. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, you, can, you can find all of these either on audiobook or e-read for free. F-R-E-E, -E, my favorite four-letter F word. It is awesome. And with Hoopla and Luby, you can get up to six borrows a month. So free is for me. So you can get a six books a month for free. Uh, instead of buying it on Audible or the only the only time I buy books now is if I absolutely loved it and then I'll buy it so I can have it and refer to it frequently. So anyway, so these are uh, some financial literacy. Oh yeah, Money Master the Game, Tony Robbins. If all of these are 
unfamiliar to you, the one I might recommend starting with is Money Honey by Rachel Richards. She's a Cutco alum. Uh, she was an All-American winner and she drops a lot of F-bombs um, and uh, she's, uh, I mean, it's an entertaining read. So I think I have a, uh, yeah, so the, oh, The Wealthy Barber is another really good first starting one. This like will review the Roth IRA and a couple other things that you can start with. And The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, like these would be the three first books I'd highly recommend starting with. These are phenomenal. All right, beautiful. So let's talk about withholdings. But before I do, uh, any, any questions or comments? You could just give me a thumbs up if you don't have any questions or comments. Okay, beautiful. All right, fantastic. So let's talk about withholdings. So all of you are very familiar with withholdings. Okay, let's go the right way here. Okay, so if you're an assistant manager, um, there has been times where your assistant manager pay got withheld and it says AM withholdings, right? And so you've saved your pay. Well, as a branch or district, you can you set up different withholdings. So there's something called a mailer withholding. Now, has Kathy spoke to you guys about uh, sending out mailers yet? Yes, no, a little bit. Okay, so um, there is the company contribution. Uh, the company puts money towards mailers for you. But if you wanna be really aggressive and send out a lot more, you can actually pay to have those sent out. So what will typically happen is a withholding will be set up on your behalf or 2% of CPO, just like if you're a 2% assistant manager, you get 2% of the CPO, 2% of CPO off your office will be withheld into this mailer withholding at the bottom of your paycheck uh, to pay for those. One I had highly recommend setting up as early as June, um, and you can set it up before if you want, but June is usually the best time because you got things rolling at that point, is a tax withholding, especially for branches and districts, just so you have money to pay for. Um, so tax, the percentage, there's a tax withholding, which is the percentage of overrides, like you're paying an assistant manager, similar to this one, or there's total tax, which I would recommend. And this is a percentage of your total income. So basically on your paycheck, it will show you your total earnings and it's 10% of that. So if you're getting a $1,500 paycheck, it's 10% of that, so it's $150, right? So um, when you sign up, it will give you option of these two. I would recommend starting with 10%. If you're killing it and knocking it out of the park, uh, you would probably want to do 15 or 20. All right. Next withholding is voluntary. So if some of you have, yes, ask your manager for more info. Thank you very much. Um, the voluntary withholding is a withholding to have you automatically save money so you don't even have to think about it. A lot of managers take advantage of this so they can save for an emergency fund or car or school or whatever it is that they're really wanting to save for, especially um, as a new DM or as a branch. When I went, first went out as a DM, I wanted to live like I was poor so I could save as much money as I wanted because I knew if it was in my bank account, it would probably get spent on some silly stuff. So the voluntary, ask your DVM, you can put in anywhere from one to 5% if you wanna be super aggressive. So 1% to 5%. Again, it's just like you would be paying an assistant manager that amount, except you're saving it for yourself. Now, if you put out a branch manager, you get overrides off them. And then as I mentioned before, you can have a Roth withholding too. You can ask your DVM about that. I would wait until you're feeling really good and you're like, wow, I'm making way more money than I need. Um, then you can send that email to Stephanie Stevens and double check with Kathy first. Oh, I did put it in here. I thought I did. All right. So sstevens at cutco.com. Beautiful. Okay. So let's talk about systems to save your profit. So Ron Carson says that systematizing the predictable so you can humanize the unpredictable. So what this means is that people are the unpredictable part. So we want to make sure to have systems for the things that we know are going to happen every single week in and out, no matter what, regardless of what um, people do. So what are those? Well, the first thing I'd highly recommend, so I've, so far I've suggested two things. I suggested a power hour to allow you to plan. I suggested a PC with money. 
I'm also going to suggest an admin hour. This can be kind of combined with that power hour. But what the admin hour allows you to do, one, I'd recommend it Monday through Wednesday, ideally, because the first thing that you want to do is put in your fast start prizes. This is an easy thing to forget as a dis new district manager or branch manager. And I will tell you, it can have very negative effects on your business if you don't order them. Because in training, as we were just listening to Mary Lou, you're like promoting like all these faster prizes they're going to earn. And if they get done and they don't get them, they're going to feel a little cheated, right? And they're going to hold some animosity even if they don't say anything. So make sure to order those right away. Um, that, that is really, really important. Um, so it's not that managers don't want to order it for their people. It's just oftentimes forgotten because you have so many different things. So if you have that power hour, just make sure Fast Start Prize is on the list and anyone who just launched or just got done with their Fast Start, you're ordering those prizes for them, unless you had like a agreement to extend their Fast Start. Base pay. So base pay is extremely important to do yourself as a new branch or district manager, because you want to make sure that one, you're looking to see like, however you have people upload, how many demos they did, if it's like a Google sheet, or if they do do it through the company website, but you want to just kind of get a gauge of like what people are doing, because if somebody's going like, you know, oh, for tens, that's something that you want to manage and not just say, oh, good, good luck next week. Um, so, and, and paying base pay is obviously important too, because you want to make sure people are getting paid. Uh, this is also a great time to review recruiting efficiency because with doing PCs, trying to recruit, calling PRs, uh, you know, doing interviews, it can, you can forget to look at recruiting efficiency, but just a quick look at it during this, you know, power hour, admin hour can make a big difference. If you do have any supplies or are giving out any product, this is also a great time to order supplies and planning messages uh, for team meetings or events because uh, some of you might be doing joint team meetings um, and joint events, and that's great. Anything you're doing by yourself, make sure to have planned. It never goes well if you try to wing it um, or fly by the seat of your pants. So a couple of the things about the Fast Start Prizes, um, and I'm just telling you this from past managers who've made the mistake, there is actually a Fast Start Awards section that you order the Fast Starts on, uh, Fast Start Awards on. Now, um, as I mentioned before, as a branch or district manager, you get an incredible discount on Cutco, but you do not want to order it through your manager discount because you get it even cheaper through your Fast Start Awards. So here's the, you order the prizes, through fast, there's a fast start tab. It will show up once you're a branch or district manager. You go to my office, running your office, and fast start awards. I have met a couple of managers who weren't told this, so they just ordered the fast start prizes through their manager discount and spent hundreds and thousands of dollars more than they needed to just because they weren't told this. Okay, a couple of base pay tips. If you're running training, make sure you know what those parts are. Um, and you feel really confident about it, make sure it's in your admin hour. Don't delegate pace pace so you can see what's happening. But most importantly, make sure you have a process and protocol when you're going to verify demos or when you're going to have a conversation with a rep. So some of you may deal with this now as assistant managers, and some of you may not. But if a rep goes like 0 for 7 or 0 for 10, like, Make sure you have a system of how to stop them, to talk to them and train them more, because obviously we know that if they're not selling a lot, they're probably doing something wrong, right? So uh, if you don't know this process, ask your district manager, ask your division manager. Um, I can give you just a quick, uh, yes, the importance of QPRs. Uh, I can just give you a quick like overview, but you can most certainly review with your DM or DVM. Uh, but essentially, if somebody goes, so our, our company average is 60% closing, right? So that means people should sell, if they did 10 appointments, they should sell at least six out of those. So if someone goes like six or seven without a sale, um, what I would do as a district manager is I would call them and say, hey, you know, your averages um, aren't matching up with the companies. I'm gonna have you 
cancel all your appointments that you have lined up ahead of you. We're going to do an emergency PC and um, we're, we're going to talk about it. So one, before I did that emergency PC, I would probably call and talk to some of the customers just to see how long the appointment was, make sure they actually you know, did the appointment with them, what they saw, what their impression was. Um, if you don't have, I'm sure all of you, uh, all of your district managers have some sort of script to call customers to ask about the presentation. And then I would just sit down with the representative, review averages with them. And typically my protocol was, hey, I want you to continue doing appointments, but we got to make sure that we're hitting company averages. So in order for you to, before you can start doing appointments again, I need you to do three things. One, I need you to memorize the close, right? So whatever pages those are for you. Two, I need you to field training with one of our reps or what's great about the virtual world is you have reps in your division available to you to set that up with. And third, I need you to watch this Vector Connect audio and tell me, give me your biggest takeaways. What I found in my experience is that if somebody's really motivated and, and it was really just a fluke, they'll get those three things done ASAP and then they'll be back out doing appointments. If they are not that motivated, then um, you won't have to worry about them not selling on their appointments in the future. So, uh, but again, talk to your district or division manager to find that out. All right, so before I move into the rising stock section to kind of teach you guys about that, any other questions? Uh, comments, concerns about any of that. Okay, you can give me a thumbs up. Beautiful. Okay, great. Fantastic. Well, um, what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is uh, rising stock. And some of you may or may not know uh, what rising stock is, but that's uh, what I'm here for. So uh, Adam Stock, who's the owner of the company, he was actually a district manager in the early 2000s. And his office was not killing it by any means. Uh, he was a pretty average manager. But what he found through talking with other districts is that although his office sales were not in the top 20%, he was profiting more than the offices that were in the top 20%. And so what he found is that there's a big disconnect for a lot of, man pretty much all managers, he's kind of a numbers guy, uh, he's a really big numbers guy, but he found that there was a lot of managers who felt, had a disconnect between running the business and finding, getting a profit. So he created Rising Stock back in 2002 when I started with the company. And he essentially built it now to right now where pretty much every single district manager, I mean, district and division managers on the Rising Stock program. Um, so let me explain to you what that is. So essentially, uh, there's two different programs, one's for branch managers and one's for district managers. We also have one for CSPs, but we'll get to that later. Each program gets a monthly profit and loss report. So what this is, it is a beautiful report with all of the, the individual's income in one section, all their business expenses in another, and then all their personal expenses in another. So at the end of this profit and loss, what is great is you can see exactly what the net profit or net loss is. Uh, so it is very, very helpful to one, get a screenshot or a glance of how finances are looking, how business is doing, but also some of you are dealing with taxes right now, right? And sorting through receipts and, oh my gosh, it's a headache. Uh, what's so amazing about the profit and loss statement is this is just, you can just email this to your accountant and it's already done for you. You don't have to spend hours going through receipts because it's already put in a beautiful report. A br the branch, the branch is you also get a profitability podcast um, once a week and that's put together by Robert Gonzalez right here. Uh, he was a silver cup winning branch and he essentially uh, interviews people across the country, um, very, very successful DMs like Kathy and Drew and uh, Dan Cassetta, and asks about real-time tips to help managers profit more. 
Now, as the new district managers, not only do they get the profit and loss report, but they also get monthly one-on-one -on -one coaching with one of these individuals. Now, because I am from the Southwest, uh, I coach the Southwest individuals. So for those of you who are new DMs and you sign up for the program, I get to get the honor of uh, coaching with you one-on-one. -on -one. And on these coaching calls, what I do is uh, essentially review the profit and loss statement and what's so great about the profit and loss statements is it shows a lot of areas of opportunity for profitability uh, to be able to um, increase more savings or increase more profit. And there's some things that might not even realize that are happening, but um, finding some areas where profit might be leaking as well. So when you sign up for this service, you actually get two people working for you. You get two people on your team we're essentially your CFO. Uh, so you have an account rep, and that's one of these lovely individuals. What they do is they actually go through your bank statements, Venmo statements, all of your statements where you spend money, and they categorize it for you. So if you've ever used Mint or Every Dollar, we have to categorize everything. They do that for you. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. So they're like, okay, Vector Connect, this is a charge, business charge. Office Max, this is a business charge. And they put that together on this beautiful spreadsheet for you. Then you have your profitability coach, which is me. And that gives you some tips and advice. Like I said, I was a Hall of Fame district manager. So I have some uh, insights on the business as well. So the process is a new month begins. So let's say it's June. Well, your account rep, whoever that is, will download all of your expenses from Vector Connect checking, your credit card accounts, and they will categorize all known expenses. But there's gonna be a couple expenses, like if you spent $50 at Walmart, they're not psychic, they don't know if that was personal or professional. So they're gonna do a quick either call or email exchange with you and ask, hey, this $50 charge at Walmart, was this business or personal? You make the call so they can categorize it and they repeat, uh, they complete the report. For new district managers, you get a coaching call uh, with the profitability coach. So this, I will tell you, saves branches and districts a whole lot of time, money, and energy, and that's why every single division manager and region manager wants their people on the program. So some of you are like, all right, sign me up. How much is this? Well, um, let me tell you, uh, if you Google, Account, if you if you Google bookkeeping companies for a small business, you can find prices of anywhere from 500 up to a thousand plus dollars a month. Well, I'm happy to say that it's not a thousand dollars. It's not even 500 uh, like the Wushtuff brand, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, branches, your reports only. It's normally 475 for the entire summer. But Lloyd, he's such a great salesperson. He got he, he got you a real good deal. Um, so it's three fifty seven for the whole summer, which only comes out to eighty nine dollars a month. Now, uh, and this is actually taken right out of startup as long as you give Lloyd the permission, uh, the thumbs up to do that. District managers, your reports and thirty minute coaching call is one seventy five a month, and that starts June fifteenth. Your service begins in May, but you don't actually get charged until June 15th so you could get things rolling. Now, when I was a new DM, I remember looking at these and I was like, I can save $175 a month myself by tracking this. And my division manager was like, no, you're gonna sign up for this. Uh, if you feel like you can do it after a couple months being on this, then, uh, then you can cancel your service. There's no contracts. And I was like, all right, deal. I, uh, my first summer I did like 225,000. So it wasn't like huge, but um, man, just learning how to juggle everything and doing everything. I would forget, like I even had this and my, um, my uh, account rep would call me and be like, hey, it's time to categorize. I'd be like, oh, it's already been a month. Holy mackerel. And I will tell you, this saved me so much time focus, like it allowed me to put focus on the things to actually drive my business. And it saved me so much money on taxes because I didn't have to worry about taking time from the business to sit down and go through all my receipts. So 
This was the reason I was on Rising Stock for my entire 10 years as a DM, because it saved me what it cost me um, tenfold for sure. So I know Kathy would 100% agree. That's why she wanted me to come today. So you all can have an opportunity to go ahead and sign up. I'm actually going to send you all the link here so that way you can sign up and there's a password, it's password protected. So you can feel safe putting in your information. So branches, when you sign up, you can just say that you authorize Lloyd to have it come out of your startup. And for district managers, again, you don't start getting charged till um, June of this summer. So uh, that is all on the chat. So I would love to answer any questions that any of you have or hear about any key takeaways uh, from previously that you had in the message. So we will stop there. Yes, Catherine. Hi, first of all, thank you so much. You gave us like so much good information. I feel like there's a lot to sort through. Um, but my question for the rising stock service is once you get that like report back, as like a first time branch manager, how do we know what to do with that? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so so basically, and I'm so sorry, my uh, I'm having a bunch of dinks. Um, basically, yeah, when you get that report, you'll get to see like all your business expenses and your, your income. So chances are, if you don't have somebody doing your taxes, you'll probably want someone to do your taxes for you in for the year of 2022. Um, and if you don't have an accountant or, or no one, I can recommend you to a few as well. But basically you would send it to them. So one of the accountants that we work closely with, uh, Rising Stock, his name's Dustin Johnson. He charges like way less than a whole lot of other accountants and works with a lot of vector people. He's like, just send me your Rising Stock P&L and we'll take care of it. So you don't really have to know much about it, but your district manager most likely is on the Rising Stock program, and uh, Kathy has been looking at these P&Ls a lot, so they can kind of review your expenses and your net profit and kind of show you areas of opportunity. So that's a really great question. So what you can, the short answer is you, you essentially use it to send to your accountant. You use it to show your district and division manager to see if there's any area of opportunity throughout the summer. So those are the couple of areas. And then once they kind of walk you through it as a branch, uh, then you can make some adjustments and, um, and then you'll know what to look for like when the next month rolls around and you get that report. Thank you, that helps. Yeah, yeah that's a great, great question. Sorry if that was long-winded. Any other questions or takeaways? Um, I yeah. uh, just wanted to say thank you so much for everything. Second time hearing this means a lot. Uh, this is fair warning to everyone. Don't forget your profit and loss. They emailed me mine last year. I just realized after Patty talked about it, I did not send it to my accountant. So it did go on my taxes, which I'm crying about right now. <laughs> Don't forget your profit and loss statement. That is not fun. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I had so many expenses and all that's gone. Yes. Yeah. I'm not very happy right now. Star that in your mail. Actually, you know, um, most accountants can refile, so I would just send it to them and see if it would, uh, yeah, like send it to them and be like, would it make that big, would it make a big difference if you had this? And if they're like, yes, uh, then they can refile for you, so you have to pay less in taxes. So I will do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of good information. I'll get the content. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yes, and can you pronounce your name for me? Adoye. Adoye. Is that right? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, well, thank you. Thank you so much for your interaction in the chat. I didn't want to butcher your name. So uh, I, I figured, I figured you're good. <laughs> Everyone uh, butchers it learning it. So it's good. <laughs> yes. Uh, any other takeaways? Anything that you're like, oh, I'm going to start doing this ASAP, John? I saw you. Uh, oh, GPD uh, in the house. All right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you so much for uh, your message. I just wanted to say that Miss Allie Bradshaw and I had the pleasure of seeing you on Thursday night um, at our division meeting. And I just wanted to say or say thank you to you and Rising Stock. You know, the service that you guys provide for everyone within the companies. 
as an incoming new DM, it's such a huge weight off my shoulders knowing that I don't necessarily have to worry about every single little expense and everything that like figuring it all out myself when I already have enough going on on my plate um, and figuring out how to open my office and get it running and, and have full steam ahead. So thank you guys so much for what you do. It's, it's truly exceptional. Oh, well, that is, uh, that means a lot to me. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I, uh, it is my absolute pleasure and um, uh, the coaching aspect is one of my favorite parts and helping districts and well, branches as well, because a lot of branches turn into districts, but uh, teaching them how to build wealth early and kind of get their stuff together. Um, there is large changes. I've been coaching with people for, you know, anywhere from five to seven years now. And uh, when they started to where they're at now has been a huge uh, difference. And it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to watch and help be in someone's corner. So thank you. All right. Wonderful. Well, Molly, um, did you have any other things that you wanted to, to add before I hop off? Um, I, first off, I just want to add on to the, uh, thank you as well. <laughs> we really appreciate you being here whenever everybody is in Maui, enjoying their life away from us. You know, they gotta, gotta get a kid, gotta get a break from the kids. Right. Uh, but, uh, would you by any chance be willing to drop like your contact info in the chat in case anybody in the future has any questions for you? Absolutely, for sure. And uh, if you have any questions while you're signing up or anything, here's my phone number. Uh, since I do have a toddler, text is preferred. Um, and then I will be able to text you whenever I am not in the middle of, you know, taking care of her. She was great. She didn't even interrupt. She just probably heard her screaming uh, for a little bit saying that she, she's like, mommy, listen to me. Uh, so anyway, but yeah, please feel free, uh, feel free to text me um, with any other questions or anything else that you need. But um, it was a pleasure tonight, everybody. And um, and good luck with your branches and districts and just good luck with the summer and keep on preparing and saving as much as you can. Thank you, Patty. So much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.